I have heard at least two distraught parents come up to tell me that they do not know what to do because their child has suddenly stopped going to church. This came after the bishop had encouraged Catholics to vote against repealing the 377A law during the survey that was taken regarding this matter. And even with the pastoral approach of his letter, which clearly empathizes with those struggling to live chaste lives amidst their same-sex attractions, young people are still unable to understand the bishop or the church's concerns. I'm not here to address either the bishop's letter or the decision of the state of the law. I would like to direct our focus on the situation of the church. More and more young people and even middle-aged persons are disagreeing with the stance of the church on a number of matters, so it seems. The church is only interested in following a moral pathway laid down by Jesus and guiding others on that pathway even if she herself fails at times. Does this mean that young people no longer identify with the moral voice of the church? Is there too little value formation at present? Or are there just not enough positive examples of the fruits that flow from living good, principled lives? One of the positive things that have surfaced out of the challenge we are faced with is that young people, we have come to realize, are thinking people. The fact that they can choose to walk out or walk away from the church means that they are not asleep. They are affected by the realities that surround them. By walking out, they are making a statement. I do not identify. I do not believe in what you are professing. Well, it is better to be, it is better than being indifferent for a start. Another positive aspect of their stance is that we are sure that they have a moral compass guiding them, just not the same ones that we are using. They take a stand on issues precisely because they are concerned for those around them. They cannot in good conscience be present to those they care about if they believe that the church which they supposedly belong to is ostracizing others, which is not, of course. A key importance for the young is freedom. That seems like their number one value. They are searching for freedom. Freedom is one of the core ideals of our faith too but so is responsibility. We are trying to teach them the latter, and that is responsibility, and perhaps we are not doing so well. They have yet to discover that freedom comes with responsibility, and so from where they are standing, the church is not an advocate for freedom. This is just an example. What we can say, though, is that just because they do not agree with what they think the church is advocating or not ad advocating does not mean that they do not believe in God. The very fact that they have a moral conscience shows that faith and a sense of godliness still resides in them. In their rebellion, they simply practice on a much more personal level, also since there is nowhere else to turn. The situation they are in is the fruit or the effect of our doing. We have placed them as equals in our midst and encouraged their inner authority to be harnessed. And these are positive things to some extent as long as it's done in a balanced way. Over and above that, we have put education and learning or more unfortunately, the acquisition of knowledge as such an important priority that our young people are more rational today than ever. The gift of technology has served to be more disadvantages than otherwise. And this leads, this leads to two problems. First, 
Their emotional maturity is underdeveloped and is not mastered well enough. And so they have emotional outbursts and act largely on them because they cannot control them. Secondly, they are so well-read and technologically savvy that they are engaging and listening to all sorts of ideological perspectives on matters concerning their lives and people around them. There is an ideological war going on. It is about indoctrinating and brainwashing people as early as they can to win votes and to pass their own agenda. It has come in all sorts of creative forms through the media. It is not a fairy tale. We can see from the people being radicalized over the internet. The sad part is that it is not that the church is not ideologically equipped to counter these arguments. It has 2,000 years of experience dealing with cases of all kinds of situations and have developed good and sound premises on which arguments are based and anchored in truth. It is just that our Catholics are not equipped with this knowledge to handle these situations. Our media presence is not developed enough to lend a voice over cyberspace to share another perspective, our faith perspective. It's not even meant for us to shove it in people's faces either. It is meant for us to be equipped with it so that we can share it with people who need to know, like our children, to start with. Young people want to discuss these issues. It matters to them because it concerns their lives and the lives of their friends. Faith is not separate from life. They are being engaged in, with life and faith when they take a stance, which they are. We do not need to get upset. We do not need to feel helpless. The church, which is you and I, and not just those in office like the clergy and religious, can make a difference. We can be educated in the faith as we are educated in many academic fields. Are we willing to commit to this or to keep our treasure in our treasure box? We ask Our Lady to pray for us as we kneel and pray the memorari.